Hi guys, welcome back to the shop. Hey, today we're going to get back on the YL2C Yamaha. Uh, we knew when we did the intro that we had a uh, major air leak. That's why it kept revving so high and the whole time it was doing that, the slide on the throttle was closed. So we know it's an air leak. Uh, today we're going to start uh, kind of fiddling around, see if we can figure out what it is. You know, probably the, the proper thing to do is to do a seal test. But in reality, we know what it is. It's, after 50 some years, the seals are bad. Or at least that's a good assumption. Uh, it's possible it can be something else. But right now, what we're going to do is we're going to delve into the magneto side and see if we can uh, get down there. I did get a seal, so I'll be able to replace that one. Uh, that's probably as far as we'll get because I've, I had to order the other stuff and it's going to be a while before it gets here, uh, the, the other seal. <clears throat> so we're going to kind of be stuck to this side for now. Um, you know, really, by the time you, uh, I have a lot of uh, little plugs and whatnot, and I can probably uh, rummage up enough stuff to do a seal test on this, and maybe we will after we do this. But we know the seals are bad, so we're gonna we're gonna replace those, and then maybe after that, after we get all the seals replaced, then maybe we'll go ahead and do a seal test. But a lot of people, it's a major chore to go through trying to find all the little uh, caps and plugs and corks and whatever you, you need. You know, you've got to go to the hardware store. You can get it. Uh, it's, it's all readily available at uh, your local Ace Hardware. But it's, we know we need to do this, so this is what we're going to do. And maybe later we'll do that just to uh, verify or if this doesn't fix the problem. So let's get into this and uh, see if we can get that done. Now, one thing I do want to point out is the, the tank after I clean this up, what I'm thinking about doing is just going ahead and stripping this and make a survivor out of it and just polish everything up or buff it out like I have here, like on the tank. Let me bring you a little closer and let you see that. You know, it, it's not perfect. You've got a lot of owies here and there, but you know, the chrome by and far is pretty good on it. Uh, we're not, I don't know when we're gonna get badges, but uh, you know, I, th I think it looks pretty good. And it needs a little bit more. I think I can pull some more out of that. But if I can buff out the frame and stuff, it's not going to be easy. Not sure I'll be able to do anything with the swing arm. But I, I'm really kind of trying to think about doing that. And I did pull these switches off the other day. <clears throat> and you can see here we've got a couple broken wires. That's probably why the horn was going when uh, you weren't pushing the switch. And it... It's probably also the reason why the lights aren't working. And on the other side, I'm not seeing the same kind of carnage, but you know, these things, you get uh, spider webs and stuff inside of them, and they just get corroded, they need clean. So that, I'm assuming, is probably why the electric starter isn't working. But we're going we're gonna to pull the uh, brushes and everything out to uh, get to the seal, and we may find the issue right there. So let's get on in there and get started on this and see what we find. So then we'll get our side cover pulled back off. Yeah, 
I've got it all loose, but it's going to be a pain again. Let me get my plastic hammer. I just have to kind of get it started. Gotta hold your tongue just right there to get that off. And we should have uh, these five wires. And uh, we've got brushes, two up here. Well, have we just got two? I think we do. And I thought with the electric start you had four. But I'm only seeing two. So that'll be kind of the kind of the next thing we need to do here. I just want to check. See, these are, uh, you know, your black, your ground down here, and then you've got orange, green, white, and that shows yellow, but it's really where this green one goes, this big, the big green one. So that's, we just need to make a note of that, and then we'll get after those brushes and, uh, two screws and then we'll see if this will come off. I just went ahead and took a quick couple pictures of this just in case. I would always recommend that. And just kind of put everything back to where it was except for the wires that need to be off to these self-contained ones, the one from the points and the one to the um, condenser. You can leave them on. It just eliminates some more issues. just need the ones that are in this loom. And then we just need a little hook here to grab hold of that spring and raise that up. And then you should be able to just pull that brush up out of there. Maybe easier said than done. Now we've got this wire right here that's kind of in our way. See if I can kind of push that in a little bit. There we go. Okay, that brush looks like it's doing okay. And we've got the same thing over here. Let me get you back just a little bit. Again, we'll just raise that spring up, pull the brush out. And that should be all of them, looks like. I'll cut this uh, tape and we'll get these, oh boy, those screws, eh, they kind of worry me sometimes. Let me go get my impact and we'll see if we can break them off. Uh, I, I broke these off before. I, I hate it when they're like that. Looks like that one we lucked out on. And this one here, we're halfway there. 
All right, I think we got her. Yep. All right, we got to get this uh, advance off. Yeah, easy enough. Okay, there's our point lobe. And this, if you remember right, it was kind of sticky. So I'll be soaking that in, probably in some lacquer thinner to loosen that up and then give it a light, light oiling in the pivot points. Okay, looks like everything, I just gotta get this tape off. All right, let's see what, that's loose. Oh, it's still got screws in there. We gotta get the screws out. Got them loose, but didn't take them out. What's up with that? It's hot here today. There we go. So our stator, because it stays put. This is the armature or the rotor. And sometimes these are not easy to get off. Looks like we've got, um, get you over here where you can see maybe. Looks like the undercut is in good shape on the armature may need to just uh, sand it a little bit. Yeah, it looks in good shape actually. All right, got a couple things here. Um, this is the one I think that works for it. That's the one. So we'll put, uh, you can do this, I believe, with just a bolt too on some of them. Let me look up in there. Uh, I don't know. I think you'd end up boogering up the top of the crankshaft if you did that, but maybe not. I'm just going to hold on to it the best I can. I may have to get a strap wrench. Let me, uh, let me do that. All right. Get the strap wrench around that so we can hold on to it. And you want to make sure that your, the metal wrench part here goes on the strap. Get that situated so you can, eh, it's kind of wanting to get behind it there. Come off there. Okay. And then pull it tight. And then we'll just kind of hold it like that. And as we tighten this, it'll tighten that. You won't be able to get a lot on it, but you should be able to get some. There she came. All right. So you can see on this puller that I've got, you can see the, the stinger there at the end. That's, that goes down into 
here. The threaded part threads into the armature, okay? But that, that point goes down into there and pushes against the bottom of the hole in the crankshaft. So you really need that. I'm afraid on this particular one anyway, if you just used a regular bolt to go down, you might, depending on how tight it is, you might booger up the threads right here. So you want to be cautious about that. Okay, she looks a little wet. Yeah, looks wet there. So I'm, I'm betting that's a lot of our problem. The other side, like I say, I don't have it. So it, uh, I don't know how long it's gonna take for me to get it, but we should be able to replace this one and uh, see if that works, see if that helps it. It's usually going to be this side. If you've got a lot of smoking going on, which, you know, how are you going to tell? Because these are two strokes. Uh, but if you've got a lot of smoke at first and it clears out, you're probably all right. But the fact of the matter is these are all, you know, 50 some years old. So you need to replace them. But this is usually the most vulnerable one. So let me get, uh, let me get some stuff to clean out in here real good, and then we'll pop that seal out. Okay, another thing I want to point out on this arm, or on the uh, stator portion, is you have a little slot right here. That is going to go right here where this pin is. So when you put it back in, make sure you line that slot up with that pin. Now I've got a pan down here and I'm first I'm just going to give it a shot of some uh, some stoddard cleaning fluid and we'll just kind of work that a little acid brush here kind of clean it up good get it loose. Uh, Stoddard, if you don't know, is kind of like uh, um, mineral spirits. And you could use mineral spirits for this too. It's just, it's, it'll degrease this without drying up very quick. So you've got plenty of time to kind of work with it. And you really need to have this clean in here before you open this, this uh, pull the seal out and open that crankcase up. Okay, once I've kind of got that taken care of, I go back in with some brake clean. Let me get you over here a little ways. And that way it, this stuff evaporates real quick, but I've got it loosened now, so this will be cleaned up pretty good. All right. So you can see how quick that dries up. And that, that's a nice clean area in there now. <clears throat> and I wanna just take my new seal. I've got this one from Yamaha. Uh, some, you, the, you can get these from uh, just a seal supplier too. Uh, if you're looking for it just from a seal supplier, you wanna get these numbers up here. And let's see. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but it's uh, 20, 40, Eight, so that's 20 millimeter ID, 40 millimeter OD, and eight millimeters thick. And now I'm going to compare this one, and it is 20, 40, 8, and it's a what they call an SD seal. And that's also says SD right there. So let me get my drill, and we'll get ready to get that puppy out of there. 
Okay, on your new seal, just take note of where the metal is back here. That's where we need to drill through, which is just about everywhere right there. And uh, that way we can get our slide hammer in there to remove it. And I'm going to start out with a, uh, I think this is about an eighth inch drill. You just pick a spot and speed that up a little bit. And go easy. You don't want to go in there with uh, and get the bearing. I'm just going slow. That's going a little slower than I want. I think my drill bit's a little bit uh, dull. Let me grab another one. You ever notice every time you want to use a drill bit, it's uh, dull. There we go. <laughs> I knew that was taking way too long. Okay, and I've got my slide hammer here. Let me show you that. This is just one I made out of a piece of pipe. I, I've showed this before. Uh, just a piece of pipe, a piece of coal roll, and I uh, thread the end and just uh, drill a hole. Actually, I think it looks like I put a washer on a nut and welded it up. And then I just, you can loosen this up when your, your drill or your uh, screws get dull. Uh, and you just put it in there and tighten it up and that it will stay in there. Let's see if we've got that big enough to get this in there. There we go. So that's, it just came through the steel portion there. And now you can see the, uh, the bearing in there. And it's getting lubricated. I can see the, the oil standing in there. I'm gonna have to look for my, my key. It was in there and now it's not. So it's probably fallen down here in my pan or onto the skid plate. So I want to make sure I locate that before I go any further. Okay, I located that key. It took me a little while. I had to uh, review the footage, uh, but when I popped that seal out, it drug across it and popped it out. Threw it back here towards the uh, uh, garage door here, down right at the very bottom. So I had a little bit of a difficult time uh, looking for that, but I found it. And I also looked it up to make sure that I had one if I needed it, and I did. It fits almost everything. So it's like 558 different models that it fits. Now I'm just gonna go in here with some Q-tips and some acetone and clean this uh, area up where we're gonna put this new seal, use lots of Q-tips. Don't chintz on them because they're, uh, this is, you know, after three trips around, I'm still getting some out. Most of the oil was here at the bottom. And then I'm gonna go in here and clean this crankshaft area off too where the, where the seal is going to run.
Okay. Now, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of black RTV. This is uh, oil resistant. <clears throat> and I'm just going to grab one of those Q-tips and use the end of it. And you want to use this sparingly. I'm sure some of you have seen me do this before. Just you don't want to push a bunch of this stuff back there into your bearing. Just put it out here on the outside and it's just a little bit because it will. It'll all push back as you push that seal in. You don't have to do it. If you're not comfortable doing it, you can just put put the seal in dry. That's what Yamaha did. But this will, if you get a backfire or something, this will help hold it in. And I just, you want to take your flashlight and make sure you've got it all the way around. And it also gives it a little more uh, sealing surface there or area to uh, To hold the seal and I'm going to take this, the q-tip and the acetone and clean my seal out here also because you want it you want this stuff to stick okay now I'm going to take a, a clean q-tip and put a little bit of grease on the inside of my new seal. And I'm going to put a little bit on the crankshaft. Don't need much. And then we're just going to push this in, and it'll it'll push in pretty good. Just try to keep it straight. I've got it, I think, most of the way in. I, of course, I didn't move the camera. Okay, I think I've got it pushed in most of the way there. And what I'm going to do now is just take a big punch that, and I'm gonna split the difference between the seal and the case and just start tapping. That way you can't drive it in too far. So you hear it hitting the case, that means that's, it's all the way. Okay, so that's, that's all it is to, to put in the seal in. And then just clean up your, uh, your work. Just like that. So there's our seal in place. Okay, I've got the armature in the chuck very gently. And we're just going to kind of work the, we need a little more speed than that. And you want to work it with sandpaper, not emery cloth. Very light. Just trying to bring back the, the shine there. Take some really fine stuff and polish it. Just so your brushes will have a way a better 
better uh, traveling on that. And uh, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and get it out of there. I just had, had it on this little stub here in the back. And I'll clean this off and blow it off and then we should be good. Okay, let me get my key wave or my key back in. It's a little loose, but it, yeah, that that seal drug it out of there. That's what happened. Okay, we cleaned this good, and we cleaned the inside of the armature. So we're going to go ahead and see if we can get this started back on there. Let me get you over here. The key keeps wanting to scoot up on me as I go in with it. So you, you want to keep keep an eye on that. See, it keeps wanting to tilt up. I am going to get this in there. I think I can just kind of hold down on that. So that's it. I just got to keep that down. There we go. I'm just going to get my mirror and look back there. And I just want to make sure I, I can feel it. It's engaged. But I just want to double check to make sure it didn't flip up back there. No, I think it's good. All right. So. I'm just going to give it a little whack here just to seat it on there while we put the uh, stator on. Okay, I've got my pin right here and my little slot right here. And just double check your, your brushes are extracted. And we'll just go ahead, I blew this out too, just to get all the dust out of it. And we'll slide this on There, you can kind of feel that pin engage. And we'll get our screws back in. Like everything's seated up there. Okay, and then we just want to double check our brushes are looking okay. If there's some of them, sometimes they're a little chipped or something, that's okay. So pull that up. Where is it? All right there. Slide it down and then stick the spring back down on top of it, right like that. Same thing with this one. Just get under that little hook, pull it up. Stick your brush back in the 
slot. And put your spring back on top of it. And just kind of make sure every all your wires are kind of out of the way and make sure that uh, there's no metal touching anything. Okay, looks good. Now we've got to get the uh, this back in. I've got to clean this up a little first. Okay, now I think you can see this pin right here sticking out. Maybe better now. It's it's right there. That is going to go in this slot right here. So before we get that in there, I want to put a little lube on the felt. Just going to put a little light oil right there to kind of soak into the wick. And before I put the cam lobe back on, I'm going to use a little cam lube. It's a uh, grease. Had this a long time. It's actually what it's for. And use just sparingly. Right where the can or the uh, points are going to run. Those wicks get dried out. That's why I want to put a little bit of oil on them. But then you you find your slot and your pin, and you may have to open up your points a little bit. And there it is. Now we can get our bolt back in. That holds it all together. Okay, and just snug it down. Actually, I think I'm going to have to get that up here. And you don't want to go after this like you're tightening the wheels on your car or anything. You're just snugging it down. Okay. Okay, and then once we get all that done, we just go ahead and hook all our wires back up. That one had a washer back there for whatever reason. Actually, I just don't think it's supposed to be back there, I think. The washer is supposed to be on the outside, so that's where we're going to put it. And I'll just leave all those loose until I get them where they're supposed to be. The white one. 
I think it had been into before. Okay, just double check, make sure we don't have any wires touching the ground or anything there. I've got them all tight and we'll go ahead and stick another little couple rounds of tape on there. Just hold that that um, wire loom down. That's all it's there for. And I'm just going to take a quick look here. See what our, see if our point gap still looks right. Yeah. It's probably not right, but I mean, it should run there. Okay, so we get to things so it'll run, then we'll adjust everything to, to specs. So I think we're done in there. I'm going to leave the cover off for now though. Okay, I just wanted to show you a couple things. I was able to find the fastener for here and a key. Uh, however, the key does not want to stay in. Even when you turn it, it doesn't stay. So I have a switch ordered. Hopefully it's the right one. I don't have to rewire everything. But I just wanted to show you. That I've got a couple trinkets here. I was able to get uh, this knob also over here. Uh, I can't remember everything. I've. It's all little stuff. Uh, you know, probably $25, $30 for all of it. But, uh, oh, I got a, I ordered the levers and I've gotten one of those in. The other one, not here yet. So, this, we're going to have to repair all these wires. I'm just going to make sure nothing's touching and uh, we'll go ahead and hook up the way we did before and give it a shot. So we've got our two wires here. Go ahead and get that key in there. And I'll just go ahead and get my positive wire hooked up here. I'll go ahead and get my 10 amp fuse in since we've been messing with things again. And I want to make sure that I've got my rubber mat here where I'm uh, not going to spark anything. And then I'll get my negative and we'll just I'm not getting any spark there so we turn it on now well, okay I think we're all right I'll go ahead and hook that up <clears throat> and I've got now well, wait I've got to get the gas hooked up I've got it laying here Go ahead and get all that back into play there. I think I'm going to kind of hook it up here somehow. Let me just go through there. I think, you know, some of the problem I was having, I think I was running out of gas. And other, th other problems was too much air. So I don't know, maybe, that, maybe that'll do it there. Go ahead and turn the fuel on. See it running down. 
hopefully it won't uh, start leaking on me. Nothing so far. Okay. Okay. Got it all hooked up. Yeah, give it a little shot so since I can't choke it. Okay, keys on. I think that's much better, don't you? So far, anyway. Oh, I did find a uh, a baffle, so I got that in there. It's a little quieter. I think it starts to run out of gas and uh, I don't think it's here it's something in the carburetor and when it starts doing that then if I go down and put my hand over the air horn of the carburetor it'll come on back to see it's idling okay now but I can tell that uh, it probably needs this seal over here because it's still getting a lot of smoke. See, it's just, uh, there's something plugging up in there or it's not getting enough into the flow bowl 
it may be that problem with that float again but I can just put my hand over the air horn and it comes back and settles down but I think it's acting a lot better with that seal in there got a fuel problem. So I think that's, that is a major help there. There was a lot of uh, wetness around that seal. So I don't think it was, uh, it was holding very good after all these years. And I suspect the other side is just as bad, but it's running in oil, so it's not contributing to the air problem as much because the oil keeps it sealed up. So there you have it, guys. Uh, it's, it's a pretty quick, deal on these actually any of it is any of these old Yamahas even the the ones with the uh, dynamo starter uh, it's just you know get your get your brushes out of the way get your screws out pull it apart make sure you understand how to line up the pins on the stator and on the uh, uh, advance for the uh, uh, I, I think it actually it's not an advance it probably uh, takes advance away to make it easier, probably retards it to uh, help it start faster or easier with the electric starter. And I didn't try that again because uh, everything is still unhooked up there. I need to go through those switches. I don't want to mess with anything until I've done that. So I think, I think we're, uh, we're better off than we were for sure. So if you got an old Yamaha, uh, even if it's an Enduro, it's the same way. It's just the way the flywheel comes off. If you've got a AT1 or AT2, 3, then it's going to be very similar to this. So hey, thanks for going along on the ride, and we'll see you next video.